Welcome back to the program. Open our borders now. That's what medical experts are saying this morning, and I agree. We have to get this country moving and back on its feet after COVID-19. But our state and territory leaders are ignoring it. They're squabbling amongst themselves. The Berlin Walls, as they're being called, along our state lines, staying up while our tourism industries go down. The toilet along with small businesses in their millions. We have done the hard yards, but it's time. This morning, we learned Pauline Hanson has engaged a lawyer to challenge Queensland's border lockdown in the High Court. She says it's unconstitutional. This is what Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk told me on Monday. Pauline Hanson says it's unconstitutional. Will that be tested? Uh, look, we, it's, it's not un unconstitutional. Um, uh, I've got my own legal advice, but also too, uh, we are allowing freight, we've got a border pass and we are allowing exemptions. Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie and 2GB and 4BC's Chris Smith join me now. Jackie, good morning to you. Is Pauline Hanson right? Um, look, I'm not sure. I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but um, there's plenty that we need to get on with here. We need to get on with the economics of the game. Uh, look, I thought we all went into lockdown originally because our hospitals, our PPE gear and our ventilators were not up to scratch yes. and we certainly didn't have enough. Now, we're three months in and what I'm hearing is that they are ready to go. So I think that as soon as we can get back to some sort of normality, it will be great for everybody in our states, especially economically. But as I've said in the past, and I will continue to say it, I'll be doing what the Premier of Tasmania um, tells me to do, basically, and the other half a million people down here. Uh, we've been very satisfied with his leadership, more than satisfied. He's done a great job. Um, we want our borders open. People want to get out there and, and spend money in the state of Tasmania yeah. um, and support it and get it back on its feet. Um, so, mate, if those hospitals are now ready and if the PPE gear is all stacked up and we've got enough ventilators, then we, I think we need to start to loosen the ropes. Here, here. It is time. If the, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer is saying it's time, there's no reason for these borders to be up, I don't know how we've still got them in place. Now, Chris, I know we're going through tough times and there are going to be tough times ahead. We're going to wake up some mornings and some people are going to have it, some people that we love. We've got to do everything we can to protect ourselves. But surely... Everything we can to do now to protect our businesses and to revitalise our businesses needs to happen. I couldn't agree more. I think we are now going through, just now, a really destructive phase in Australia's history. I think we've got to a situation where the bureaucrats, the state bureaucrats, are somehow playing a game of seeing who can eradicate the virus first. Mm. Now, if, if it was about eradication, we wouldn't allow drivers to get into their cars and get on the roadway. We wouldn't allow that because that is extremely risky. But we've now got to a situation, for instance, in Victoria, with a population of 6.4 million people, they've got 97 active cases. For heaven's sake, give me a break. Like, Queensland has had more zeros than most of my bad football teams. Yep. The, the borders <laughs> need to open. <laughs> the Lions had a bad run there, for, I, but I, I'm with you on that. If you look at what's happening in Victoria right now, it's a desperate situation. Front page of the Herald Sun this morning, tourism is ground to a halt. Tens of thousands of people have lost their livelihoods, tens of thousands. And there's still no date on when travel and tourism within that state will resume. Jackie, it's the same for Tassie in the tourism industry. It's struggling. Oh, yeah, we don't mind taking the money off you mainlanders. I'll be honest about that. I've said that in the past and we'd love to have you all back down here again. But in the meantime, as soon as we're able to, I just ask Tasmanians to go out, support their local community, go back to um, the simple things in life and take your holidays in your state until we can start flying elsewhere. Chris, I'm with you on this. I think there's been a seismic shift. Even just, even just yesterday, um, driving around the place, uh, watching people in coffee shops, watching small businesses, picking up a vibe. People are irritated. They're, they're aggravated. They want to get on with it. If our medical system can handle it, then surely let's punch in. Yeah, people have done the homework. They've done their own homework. We've been able to see the number of active cases. We've been able to have a look at the recoveries. We've also been you know, given almost daily updates on the number of new cases. They have made their decision and they believe that the risk is extremely low. Yeah. And we've got a board of medical doctors at the federal level, the chief medical officer and the various deputy medical officers saying, stop it, open the borders. And for every week that we decide, well, we want eradication, baby, we're going to win 
that the state and territory battled for eradication, we are losing tens of thousands of livelihoods, jobs, millions more will lose unless we get down to business right away. It's complete BS from some of our premiers right now. Yeah. Do you want to talk about uh, some more BS? Um, those forward-thinking people at the United Nations are pushing forward, or pushing us, uh, to adopt more gender-neutral language. Jackie, you're going to love this story. So it's goodbye to ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, replaced with folks or y'all. Gone too will be boyfriend, girlfriend, husband or wife. From yeah. now on, it'll be partners, partners. Jackie, $95 million of Aussie taxpayer money is going to the UN every year. Money well spent? Oh, certainly not on this stuff. I mean, we're in a COVID-19 crisis. We're economically suffering right around the world for it. We want to get back on our feet moving. I would have thought that would be on their agenda. Yes. Discuss, discuss that or put that money into finding the origin of where this COVID-19 come from in the first place so it doesn't happen again in the future. That's what I thought. But I've got to say something, guys and uh, mates out there, uh, I struggle with the English vocabulary as it is, so I certainly <laughs> won't be changing my tune. <laughs> It'd take more than the UN to change your tune, Jackie Lambie. Chris, what do you think? Uh, look, until it's punishable by law and we all end up in jail, I'll be using the words that suit the way my society runs, whether it's, you know, landlord... I'm sorry, landlord's got a stick. I understand the bit about policeman can't be a woman and all that sort of thing. We've, we've, we've got over that well and truly, you know, years ago, but... The, the landlord, and you've got to you've got to change the word landlord. Mm. Come on, it's about the intent of a word. It's not about the definitional understanding of the word. It's about the intent of the word, and they've got it all wrong. And Jackie's right. The timing couldn't be worse. It makes a mockery of the UN. <laughs> good on you, Chris Smith, and good on you, Jackie. Nice to see you back um, and at home with that brick wallpaper. I love that stuff. I'm, coming, I'm going to come <laughs> visit one time. Here, no, here. it's re it's the real deal. I'll cook you a tassie roast lamb, mate. You'll love it. I won't get out of there alive, Jackie Lambie. <laughs>